it's me again, and it is time for Motivated Moments of History! Listen up, man. I hate beets. I hate spiders. I hate cheese pizza. And I really hate my ex-wife. But all that hate I have pales in comparison for the hatred this badass dude had for Nazis. We're talking about Lewis Millet. Colonel Lewis Millet. The sweet mustache having pipe smoking two grenades hanging from his shoulders. Pure American badass. I'm just getting chills thinking about it. Let me go ahead and give this guy a woo! Woo! Okay, as I was saying, this guy hated some Nazis. More than hated him. He loathed some Nazis. He hated Nazis the way liberals hate biology. He hated them so much that his junior year in high school in 1940, he dropped out and joined the army. You know, but at the time, the U.S. was doing all it could to not intervene in the war in Europe. So he wasn't able to go fight. You know, he didn't like this, so he decided to go AWOL. And he went up north of the border and joined the Canadian army in hopes of going across the pond and slaying some motherfucking bodies. But unfortunately for him, he was assigned to what we know as the air defense artillery, and he was sent to Britain to help defend them against the barrage of incoming rocket attacks during the Blitz. I mean, this didn't really set well with him, especially after the attack on Pearl Harbor. When the U.S. finally decided to go get knee-deep with some German ass crack, Millet said, you know what, Canada? Screw you, your stupid bacon, Celine Dion the Winter Olympics. I'm going back to America and deploy with them so I can go mushroom stamp some Axis powers in the face! He was assigned to the 1st Armored Division and sent to Africa to help fight Rommel's forces. Rommel's tanks, they were nearly impenetrable. But this didn't stop this guy from, you know, laying down some form of hate. I mean, he earned a Bronze Star for using his truck-mounted machine gun to shoot down a German pilot in mid-flight. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. This guy shot through the cockpit and peeled the dude's face off. That is a literal statement. Flying face, all of a sudden flying, no face. I mean, he also earned a silver star later for mounting a burning half track and driving it away from his men, and then jumped as it exploded. This guy's life was like an action movie reel. I mean, I'm almost certain he did some of this stuff in slow motion. He quickly made Sarge and moved on to Italy for his next stop in his world ass-kicking tour. I mean, it was there that his superiors realized that he did in fact desert back in 1940. And you know, when he went to the Canadian Army, so they had to court-martial him. You know, but he was such a monumental Nazi teabagger that he was sentenced only to a $52 fine. I mean, the sentence for desertion was strict, especially at that time. I mean, long prison sentences, some cases maybe even death. But it's not every day someone deserts their post because they're not kicking enough ass. I mean, and then to make sure that he wasn't too upset with the fine, I mean, they battlefield commissioned him to lieutenant a few weeks later. All right, uh, for, fast forward a few years. It's now after World War II. It's the 1950s, and Colonel Millet, or then Captain Millet at the time, needed to get his fix on some dead people. So uh, with the Korean War starting up, he found his chance to once again go unbeaten in a world badass championship. All right, so in the Korean War, he was a company commander of the 27th Infantry Regiment. Now, seeing he was already a decorated war hero and a bona fide killer, I mean, you think he'd, he'd be trying to put his glory days behind him, right? Nah, uh-uh. No, World War II is just the opening act. I mean, one day while fighting in North Korea, old Lewis came across a piece of intel that China thought Americans were a bunch of soggy vaginas and were, were too scared to duke it out hand-to-hand. -hand. This pissed him off so bad that his mustache grew six freaking inches. And at that point, he made it his personal mission to knuckle blast anybody in a raiding hat square in the taint. While fighting for a key piece of terrain named Hill 180, one of his, the platoons in his company was pinned down by heavy uh, enemy fire. You know, so he told the other platoons to fix bayonets and he stood out front and led a charge spanning a good distance across snowy hills and all this other stuff into a bunker of 200 enemy fighters. There he stabbed two men, clubbed many more in the nuts and just threw a slew of grenades all over the place. I mean, he was wounded by one of the grenades, but he wasn't phased at all, and he refused treatment until his guys conquered their objective. I mean, all in all, nearly a quarter of that North Korean force was killed, and the rest ran away to go tell tales of the psycho mustache who just whooped their asses into submission. As for his guys, they maintained minimal casualties and spent the afternoon bathing in the blood and guts of their opposition. I mean, for these actions, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Later on, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for leading yet another 
you guessed it, bayonet charge and slayed even more commie bastards. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Digga! Yeah! I mean, now a veteran of two wars receiving multiple awards for valor, he could have just retired, you know. But no, he stayed in and went to Vietnam his third war. I mean, there he founded the famous Recondo School, and he trained commandos to conduct long-range reconnaissance, and so they can go control all the elites in motherfucking BC. He was promoted to colonel, and that's the rank he retired at. And he's the only guy in the history of the U.S. Army to be found guilty for desertion via court-martial, and then go on to make a full bird colonel. This guy had no regard for enemy life and no regard for the AR-670-1. He died in November 2009 of congestive heart failure, proving the only one who can kill this guy was his own stinking body. I mean, his life was as if a video game in the Rambo franchise, bones in a back alley and had a baby and named that baby Lewis freaking Millet. I remember driving my car 30 miles over the speed limit and thinking that I was a badass. After reading this guy's biography, I came to the realization that me and everyone else are nothing but a bunch of sniveling bitches because Colonel Millet just set the par for badassery. And that, kids, is your motivated moment of history. And with that, I'm out. <laughs>